All right. Good morning, everyone. I'll probably say that a couple of times as people are getting into this morning's webinar and advisory walkthrough for Character Strong, 6th or 12th grade. Uh, if you're getting in early, uh, over on the right-hand side, you will find uh, the opportunity to ask questions. I uh, will remind uh, multiple times at the beginning here that all of those are private. Only we can see them. So ask whatever you need. Don't be scared to engage over in the uh, the chat area. Um, we're excited that you're joining us this morning. We're going to get going in just about 30 seconds. Uh, in fact, as we're just getting started, um, today's webinar is on our advisory curriculum. And uh, my name is John Norlin, one of the co-founders. And uh, excited that you are here. Sorry, <laughs> had someone tell me that was 8.30, but I have it at 8 o'clock. So I have multiple people in the room, and I'm going to start at 8 o'clock. And then if we need to do another one, we can. Uh, but so excited that you're here. If you would, uh, go ahead and drop your name over on the right-hand side uh, and uh, where you're watching from, where you uh, watching today's webinar. Uh, it's always good to know where people are listening in from, where people are watching from, and, uh, and any questions that you might have right away about the Character Strong Advisory Curriculum. And uh, I'll begin to answer those and uh, jump right into our presentation. All right, so where are you watching from? Introduce yourself. What's your role in the district or school that you're in? And uh, to get started, I'll do this beginning part really quickly, and then I'm going to uh, show a few lessons uh, that are on our website, answer any questions. We'll keep it tight within this uh, next 30 minutes, and uh, we'll go from there. So John Norland, one of the co-founders of Character Strong, I was in the classroom for a decade at the high school level where I taught a full load of social-emotional learning meets character development classes. And uh, I then moved to the district level where I was the program administrator for the whole child. Uh, and that was K through 12. How are we infusing this work uh, into the daily fabric? And so excited to share with you uh, today uh, things that uh, we have been doing, uh, ways that we've been supporting schools. Uh, here is our theory of change at Character Strong. Uh, one is there's four components. These are the things that we can control. This is the work that we do to really put a focus on the implementation side of things, not just the um, what it is that's being taught, but how we roll that out. We know that that is critical. And uh, and so we put a focus on that and, and partner with Dr. Clayton Cook at the University of Minnesota. Uh, number one, uh, the first component is school-wide integration practices. So these are specific things that we can be doing to really infuse this work uh, school-wide. Uh, we always say it's more than a curriculum, it's a culture. And so what are the things that we're doing that we can control to make sure that this is going school-wide with our integration. The second part is the adult relational practices. And we do a lot of professional development in this area and uh, per, um, support this in schools in building professional development, uh, as well as regional trainings where schools will send their teams. And we put a huge focus on the adult behavior change that needs to happen. We know that staff readiness, that staff buy-in work has to be there. Um, and so we put a huge focus in on that area. So we have five main tier one adult behavior practices that we wanna see school-wide. The third one and what we'll be talking about today is the advisory curriculum, that's tier one. That's our third component. Uh, this is school-wide, tier one. What is uh, What are all students being exposed to? What are all staff engaging in? And then the fourth component is a student leadership component. You can do this one a lot of different ways, but it's really, what are we doing with a smaller group of students? Uh, that are being mentored, poured into more, uh, that are more likely then to demonstrate the pro-social behaviors that we want to see uh, school-wide. And so uh, to break it down, our Carrick Strong Advisory Curriculum, uh, here's what it is. Sixth or twelfth grade, it's vertically aligned, so it's not the same lessons. There are 35 lessons per grade level, uh, grades six through eight, and 25 lessons per grade level, nine through twelve. It's plug and play. 
um, built by teachers for teachers. This was really important to us. And when we say plug and play, our goal is as long as staff has had uh, proper professional development, um, which we can provide and help schools with all the time, our goal is that they should be able to click into these lessons 30 seconds before, and they should be able to teach those lessons. That's our goal that we're trying to get to. And so we have slide decks uh, for every one of those lessons in both English and in Spanish, video resources, uh, as well as we intentionally bring not just social emotional learning, but character development side by side um, with those um, uh, each of those lessons. And that's something that makes us unique. So let's look at it live. I'm gonna do uh, one right here from eight to 8.30, and then I'm gonna do another one. I think it sounds like from 8.30 uh, to nine. So if you're already on, uh, feel free to drop any of your questions over on that right-hand side in the chat. And, uh, and so here we are, this is our platform. I'm gonna screen share so that you can see it. And I'm just going to uh, walk through a few of our lessons. I've intentionally uh, chosen a few uh, to showcase for you. Uh, all staff in a building would get access to uh, the platform. And uh, when they come in here on the left-hand side, there's the advisory tab. And the first thing that happens when I click on it is there's an overview. So when I click on that overview tab and get into it, there's a welcome. Um, and one of the things it does is it gives suggestions of different ways that you can use the advisory curriculum. One of the things we're proud of is that it's very customizable. There are different ways that you can um, uh, use this advisory curriculum. Uh, many schools will go by grade level because it is built out grade six, seven, and eight at the middle level, grades nine, 10, 11, 12. And, uh, and for each of those, um, they're not the same lessons, which is important. It's vertically aligned. And, uh, but it also can be done if you are mixed grade level. And so in many cases, uh, what schools will do there is they'll do what we call year one tracks. So everybody's doing the same lessons. The school's getting behind those lessons, communicating about those, getting all staff on board. And, and we found that uh, people love it one way or the other, but both work and uh, that there's benefits to both of those. At the bottom of this section also is our family letters in both English and in Spanish. And so here's this kind of that kickoff where if your team or whoever's getting ready to implement it and lead this work, they uh, have this as a resource to uh, first dig into. I'm gonna skip down to the third tab, which is implementation resources. And uh, we know that it's never going to work to just say, uh, here's a curriculum and good luck. So we know that we have to put a focus on the implementation side of things. And so here are um, uh, two of our main implementation resources that are available. One is our Character Strong Implementation Inventory, our CSI, and it really is that theory of change. It is uh, those four components, things that we can control, something that you could do a self-evaluation on as a team, but also that you could have as an outside fidelity audit and uh, we've come in and done multiple of those fidelity audits with schools to help them to get feedback, what's working, what's not working, so that they can action plan. And so this part's huge because it really uh, takes that theory of change and helps a school team and leadership say, here's what we can control to strengthen our tier one when it comes to rolling out character strong. And what I would say is this, when a school's saying we do character strong, well, then they need to be doing all four of those components, the school wide integration practices, the adult relational practice piece that's very specific, tier one curricula, as well as the student leadership aspect. If not, then you're doing a component of Character Strong. The second resource that's here is what we call our implementation leadership skill. And what we know, what we found, not only from experience, but really digging into this work, is that that building leader the building principal, system principals, those that are leading this work, that obviously their influence, their intentionality or lack thereof really matters. And so what are the leaders in the building doing to help successfully um, implement this? And so the leadership scale is something that the building leaders can use, uh, really in rolling out anything, um, but to really help with the successful implementation of Character Strong. At the bottom of this one also is a button where you can download all the lessons. A lot of people ask, they're always giving us ongoing feedback. What if we just wanted to print all the lesson plans at once to give to our teachers? They're all there. 
uh, in a button now at the bottom of the implementation resources. So I've identified just a few lessons that I wanna show and please drop in any questions that you might have. Let us know where you're watching from. Um, but I'm gonna drop first into the middle school. And when I click on grade six, which also at the middle level is uh, what schools might use as the year one track if they had mixed grade levels, I wanna show you a couple lessons and how they're broken down. So the first one I wanna jump into is grade six, lesson six, and it's a mindfulness lesson. And the, the topic is uh, emotion mind. And I want you to show you a couple of things as I click into this lesson in terms of ease of use. So the first is that there's a blue bar at the top of this lesson. And what that means is uh, that this is a new concept. So it's the, in the first year of teaching this or it's in the grade six level. And so here's a new concept um, or there is a new concept in this lesson being taught. I click on it, this one's actually me talking about mindfulness. So this one's for the educator. So here's a brief explanation of what mindfulness is. So they have a little bit of a heads up. They don't have to read a bunch of documents. It's right there uh, for them to maybe listen to, minute, minute and a half uh, to help them with that prep. And then when I click into the digital lesson, there's everything that you'd expect to see, objectives. Uh, one thing to note when it comes to materials, uh, one of the roadblocks that has to be removed with a tier one curriculum is that there can't be a bunch of materials that you have to get. If you have to go get a bunch of materials, it's not going to work. You, you can't uh, have to make a, a thousands of copies. That's not going to work. It needs to be something that you would naturally have in your classroom. It needs to be something that is plug and play as much as possible. And I always pause when I first kind of say that because sometimes people will say, well, that kind of feels a little canned. And what I would say to that is this, you can't have it both ways, right? We don't want it canned, yet we don't have the time ability to put together a vertically aligned curriculum, sixth or eighth grade or ninth through 12. And so you can't have it both ways. So for us, it's really important having come from the classroom is this, that it's easy to use to get fidelity tier one, right, school-wide. But the more that educators uh, dig into this, the more they become familiar with it, the more that they will make it their own. So it needs to be something that they can immediately uh, click into and uh, teach uh, that doesn't require a lot of prep. And so the first thing I notice here under materials is there are packets so I can download the lesson plan in black and white or in color so that the teacher has the more detailed instructions. But then there's slide decks. And although the lesson is digitally here, I can go down and look and read what it is. If there's an image, by the way, even in the digital lesson, if I click on it, it fills the screen. But most teachers do not use this. What they use is the actual slide deck, which is in English and in Spanish. And so when I click into this slide deck and go full screen, there it is for me. And I can click right through that lesson. Mindfulness, emotion, mind. Here are the objectives. So the teacher can click right through that. And this, if, the, if you're new to Character Strong, is maybe an introduction for you into something that's very intentional at the secondary level to get more engagement, to get more buy-in, to create more relevance. And it's something we call our Character Dare process. So moving out of elementary school, where a lot of times with social emotional learning, you might do role playing, that does not work at the middle and high school level. We know that, I know that from being at the district level and being told over and over again that our middle schoolers are done with it when it comes to SEL. And in digging in, one of those things was it can't look elementary. It needs to move away from role playing. What is something that's more relevant? And so our character dare process, I believe, is that. Uh, I've seen this for 10 years in the classroom myself. I did this with high school students, which can be the most difficult group to get traction with. And what I found is it completely works, that they do want this. And so the character dare process is like this. This is last week's character dare that was introduced. It's a challenge. And it happens to be that this one's about kindness. It might be on another character trait like commitment or selflessness or even forgiveness. But this one is titled, How Can I Help? And the challenge was this. Offer to help a family member with one task today. A different option is to do an activity one of your family members usually does instead of them doing it. This could be taking out the trash or sweeping up. You could also reach out to your neighbors, coaches, or teachers to offer help. So there's lots of different ways that this one can be done. But here was last week's Character Dare Challenge that we sent you with. And then it moves into the Truth or Dare process. And what we found is this. The beauty of the truth or dare process, one, it's supposed to be somewhat fun. 
And if someone even has like um, a comfort level with this, we're like, I don't know about the truth or dare. Great. Look at the prompts because the prompts work because the prompts do not require that every student in your classroom has done the actual character dare. If you do require that or if you grade it, it will work against you. But what the truth or dare process actually does is it gives everybody a voice, whether they did the character dare or not. Because for some, the character dare process is just facing the character dare. It's considering it. It's why am I not ready? And so in that case, if we're having a class conversation, which is how the lesson works, the first five to seven minutes, teachers get used to this process. They know it's coming. It's just different character dares that we're talking about. What will happen is we come in. First thing I'll do is I'll say, all right, here was last week's character dare. Last week's character dare was how can I help? Offer to help a family member with one task today. And then I'll say, all right, turn and talk, truth or dare. And in that truth or dare, it's either speak your truth. What do you think about the most recent character dare? Or dare, I tried it. I attempted it. And here's what I learned about myself or about my family or others in doing the dare. So quick turn and talk. And then we always go full group. Have a few people share out loud because they can learn a lot from each other's experiences. We are in the seed planting business when it comes to this process. This is much more relevant and some of them are focused on family, some of the dares, some are focused on their friends, some at school, some outside of school, but some really great conversations can uh, begin to take hold by sticking with and trusting this process. And then we always send them off with a new character dare. So this is sixth grade titled Kindness Ninja, Write five positive notes with an inspiring message. Leave each of them in a different place without others knowing. And then there's a little subtext that they can read and the teacher might talk about what are different ways that we could accomplish this character dare. And after that first five to seven minutes, which at the beginning sometimes takes a little bit more time and sometimes the conversations get so good that teachers go with it, which is great. Maybe it takes 10 minutes, but then it gets into the lesson. And so we've moved now from the character development piece where we're talking about who it is that we want to be, the relational work, which also is social emotional learning, and then into a social emotional learning lesson. And so this one um, is on uh, emotion mind. And so there's some discussion questions. Raise your hand if you've ever made a decision or took an action without really thinking about it first. Nobody's going to raise their hand to that. Um, raise your hand if you've ever had a hard time focusing on something. Raise your hand if you've ever gotten into an argument, friend, teammate, parent, et cetera. Did your anger about that situation make it harder to focus on other things going on around you? And then what it's gonna do is it's gonna introduce them to mindfulness, being able to control our own thoughts, feelings, and actions instead of letting them control you. It's putting your mind where you want it to be. And then it takes them through basically a lesson with an activity and some discussions, right, where they're learning about this. And it's built to be a 30-minute lesson um, but we have many schools who fit it into a 20 to 25 minute and they have to get unique with it, but it works. We have some that even have 40 minutes and they think it works great, especially in the first year as they're getting used to it. So it's very customizable in that sense. Um, but I wanted to show you what one of these would look like in that slide deck fashion. And also just as a reminder, the slide decks are also in Spanish. So student facing materials, right, that your teachers could use. Um, and so that's an example of a middle school lesson. I want to show you an example of a high school lesson at the ninth grade. So if I go down ninth grade and the year one track and the lesson I wanted to show today was lesson 11. It's a growth mindset challenge. And uh, once again, uh, the blue bar is at the top. That means this is the first time in the ninth grade that growth mindset is being introduced. So there's a video for the teacher that they could watch that introduces them to the concept of growth mindset. And then here's some materials. They need to be things that naturally would be in the room. So paper, writing utensil for the student. There's the slide decks as well as the lesson plan that the teacher can print out. So if anything, that might be what they print out, but it's not required and they can preview the lesson in this way. You'll notice the character dare process is there like normal, and then it's gonna go into a lesson on growth mindset. And so what I love about this lesson is it has a video on growth mindset with some discussion that they can have, and then it goes into a fun activity called paper football. And basically they're gonna end up making paper footballs, not like flicking them, but it's one where you're sliding it across the desk, and so it's an interactive activity 
that get students eventually talking about growth mindset and the more that we practice something that we're capable. And even notice on the digital lesson, there's this uh, camera icon. And if there's an activity, we've tried to film as many of these activities so it would show the teacher how to actually set it up. So instead of once again, reading a bunch of resources or trying to figure out sometimes the instructions, here's an actual video so they can see it. And many teachers in the first year will even show that video and say, here's what we're trying to do. And we're trying to remove as many of those obstacles as we can um, to help with that. So a couple different lessons, slide decks, built to be plug and play as much as possible by teachers for teachers, vertically aligned, sixth through 12th grade, uh, and built to be more of a once a week type of setting where there's 30 minute lessons. Um, the only other thing that I would put a focus on and then answer any questions here is this, everybody at the secondary level who has access to our advisory curriculum also has access to something called the Character Strong Gym. And in the Character Strong Gym, it's basically a library of resources. And people love this. These are, uh, in, in this Character Strong Gym currently, it's something that we're always adding things to. There is an entire section on growth mindset uh, in academics. Um, let's see. I'm looking at a note here. I don't know what you're referencing. We can't see any questions on the back end. I'm trying to think what that might be. Oh, don't worry. I see Brian in there. It said 8.30 Pacific. I'm going to do another one in just about eight minutes. So feel free to jump right back on. Um, and so if you came in late and you're uh, just getting ready, I will do another one of these right at 8.30. We can call this the warm up um, on that. Uh, but I also wanted to uh, finish on the Character Strong Gym that there is an entire set of growth mindset and academics resources. There's restorative practices, a set of restorative practices that uh, you could infuse into the daily fabric of your school from community building circles, peer mediation, re-entry circle, restorative circle, teacher-student reconciliation. There's also um, our uh, character dare sets for the adults. So there's an entire year's worth of admin character dares, which are really cool. So not just for the students to use, but what are some proactive relational strategies that the administrators could use? And we talk about this one a lot, but I love it, especially if it's your first time kind of learning um, this one's called Staff Chips. Purchase an inexpensive set of chips and put each staff member's name on one. Each day, grab three to five chips and put them in your pocket. As you walk around the school, intentionally spend a couple extra moments connecting with those staff members. I love this idea. Um, it says pop into the classroom or stick around to ask them an extra question to get to know them or ask them what they need right now to feel supported. When done, put those chips in another bin until you've worked your way through all the chips. So just a very practical strategy for admin. There's an entire year's worth of that. There's also an entire year's worth of family character dares that someone can use um, and can send out to their families once a week to make connections to what you're doing at the school. And then there's two years worth of staff character dares, things that you could be pushing out to staff once a week to give them ideas on how to relationally connect better with students, with each other, with families, and then uh, I'll end with this. I love this as an infusing tool into the daily fabric. It's called our activity library. And so let's say I'm not in the advisory class, and uh, but yet I want to do a get to know activity. In fact, I want to do a name game because it's the beginning of the year. And uh, when I go into the activity library, I click that I teach ninth and 10th grade and that the time I have for this is uh, actually only one to 10 minutes. And so as I'm clicking these tags, the activities begin to move. The group size I want is, it, it'll be a large group, 10 plus, because I'm gonna do a full class, get to know. And then the risk level, well, it's low because it's the beginning of the year. And as I click these, the activities continue to move and then I go to tags and uh, there's everything from debrief to energizer to get to know, but I'm gonna click name games. And once I click name games for a full class, here are six different activities that I could do in my English class or my math class to help learn names. People love this uh, resource because it's all tagged, different things you can do from get to know activities uh, to name games to icebreakers. And so that is also built out for you. 
So it looks like some thought that this was going to be um, starting at the bottom of the hour. So I just warmed up for about 25 minutes and I'm going to be starting another one of these in about five minutes. So feel free uh, to uh, drop any questions that you have. I'm going to queue up the slide deck. I know there's 29 of you that are in there. So feel free right now uh, to be asking any early questions, but I'm gonna move over back to the initial slide deck and we're gonna do another one here starting in just a few minutes. All right. Good morning, everyone. For those that were here about 10, 15 minutes ago and got the warm up webinar, you got to love it when doing live webinars and the different timings from Pacific to Central to Eastern time. But we are so excited that you're here. There is a good number of people that are on the webinar now, which means that it was supposed to start at the bottom of the hour, which is great. And you now have uh, myself who is fully warmed up in webinar mode and I'm excited to dig in with you. My name is John Norlin. I'm one of the co-founders of Character Strong. And uh, today our webinar is on our advisory curriculum, grades six through 12. Um, and uh, first thing, if you haven't done it yet, please do on the right hand side, you're gonna find a chat feature. Uh, I want you to know a couple of things. One, all of those uh, it are uh, private, so nobody else is seeing those, so drop any questions that you might have. Uh, also, we love it when you introduce yourself. Where are you watching from? What role are you in? Uh, it feels a little bit more personable instead of just talking to a screen, so I always love that. And uh, if you have any questions, drop them in there. We have a team in the background who's gonna be putting those in front of me. I'm gonna be pausing at different times. We always love to do giveaways as well. Uh, to encourage that participation. So let's have fun with it. Let's dig in uh, because ultimately we know our kids need this. And uh, if you um, weren't about the whole child, you wouldn't be here. We are about uh, bringing that social emotional piece. Uh, for us, it's bringing social emotional learning and character development together uh, and to weave that into the daily fabric of our school. And we know it can't ever just be about a curricula that we need to look at it from a holistic approach. And so 
I'm going to dig in, not waste any time. I've really uh, chosen some intentional lessons to showcase. I'll do be doing a screen share. Um, Jennifer, I see you there. Like Oswego, thanks for joining in. Uh, Michelle Wood uh, down in Oregon as well. Amy from Kansas, thanks for uh, joining us. So excited. Keep dropping those uh, names in there and questions that you have. In fact, a great way to start is it, it coming into the webinar, what's the number one question that you have? And maybe it's just like, I just want to see it. Or maybe there's something specific that you've heard. Drop any question that you have immediately coming into this. That makes it fun, more engaging, and uh, I might dig right in. So introduce yourself. Where are you? What's your role? And uh, let's talk about our theory of change. This is important. We're never going to be just about a curricula. So here's Character Strong's theory of change in partnership uh, with Dr. Clayton Cook at the University of Minnesota. Uh, and it has four parts. A way of looking at it is this. This is what we can control as a school. And we can get really zeroed in on this. We're going to impact the tier one, the foundational support, so that everything else that we're trying to do has a better opportunity to actually work and to take. So the first component is school-wide integration. So core component number one, specific practice elements that aim to integrate it into a school's culture and climate. So if you're doing character strong, it's not just the curriculum, you are intentionally weaving it into the school-wide integration efforts. We have an entire implementation rubric on this. We can drop that into the chat, send it as a follow-up uh, to um, the webinar, and you will get a replay of this. You will get the slides. People always ask that. So to pre-correct that, you'll get a, a replay of this that you can go back to. You'll also get the slides, and we'll put some other resources that I reference as well. Uh, so the second component. So the first is school-wide integration. Let's see here. The second is adult relationship practices. And so um, we know that the key to this working is adult behavior change. And so the adult readiness work is critical. And I think um, there's two things that we do really, really well at Character Strong. There's a lot of things we do well, but two things I think that are right in the forefront. Number one is we provide solid relevant, engaging, easy to use, low burden, high impact type of resources for uh, educators for schools to use to impact kids. I think probably the most important work we're doing right now is the adult relational work, the adult behavior change that is needed, the in quote staff buy-in work. Um, it's not only hitting the why, but the how. Um, and I think that all those are important. And so we have five main tier one adult relational practices that we teach to that should be happening with fidelity if a school's truly doing character strong. The third component is the tier one curricula that I'm about to showcase and dig into. This tier one means all, it means universal, it means all students are being exposed to it, all staff are uh, teaching it, that's the goal with a tier one curricula. And the fourth component is what we call our student leadership component. This one can be done a lot of different ways, but the idea of it is this, what are we doing with a smaller group of students? who are being more mentored, more poured into. Those students ideally are representative of your student population, uh, that, uh, that they're then more likely to demonstrate the pro-social behaviors that we wanna see school-wide. So how do we increase the student buy-in piece? Well, we can intentionally work with peers um, and students, peers of those students to be demonstrating those pro-social behaviors. So they need more training, more mentoring. And so th that's our, theory of change, those four components. And so the breakdown before I actually show you the screen share is this. In our advisory program, grades six through 12, it's vertically aligned. So this is really, really important. It needs to be vertically aligned. It cannot be the same lessons year to year. It's not going to work. So six through 12th grade, vertically aligned. At the middle level, there are 35 lessons per grade level, six through eight. At the high school level, nine through 12, there are 25 lessons per grade level, nine through 12. So almost 100 lessons or approximately 100 lessons because there's some bonus lessons in there um, for each of those for middle and for high. And yet if you go district wide, which many schools and districts that we work with do, it's vertically aligned sixth through 12th grade. We'll do a different elementary uh, toolkit one, but you technically could have a district who is K through 12 with character strong or elementary component is uh, purposeful people. It looks different, it feels different, it needs to be that way or students are going to be done with it when they get to middle level. And so, um, but that vertically aligned piece is critical. Um, it is built to be 
plug and play as much as humanly possible. It was built by teachers for teachers. And that's incredibly important, especially at the secondary level. It needs to be people who actually have been in that classroom. We had the 30 year veteran in the development process who kept saying things like, I would never do that in the classroom. And if it's tier one, it means that all staff need to be able to teach it. All staff need to be able to engage with it. And so that's a fun challenge to work with, uh, but that was important to us. Plug and play also means this, you can't uh, be required to make thousands of copies. It's not gonna work. It needs to be something that you can project and go. Um, it needs to be something that does not require a bunch of materials that you have to go get. No, that's not going to work. So it needs to be naturally what you would have in the room. People, something to write on, something to write with, something that you could plug and play. And so we have slide decks in English and in Spanish for every lesson. Now, I always pause at this moment because I've been there. I was at the high school level for a decade teaching a full load of social emotional learning meets character development classes five classes a day, and then was at the district level as the program administrator for the whole child. And I get it, some people will say, well, this feels a little canned. And what I would say to that is this, you can't have it both ways. We don't want it to be canned, but yet we don't have the time, energy, ability to put all the prep in to develop something that's vertically aligned. So for us, the goal is this, that the more that an educator becomes familiar with this, the more and more they're gonna make it their own with the discussions and the activities and the things that are there, but it needs to be something. Our goal that they could click into 30 seconds before and they could teach that lesson. That's our goal. That's our standard that we're going after. We know that some need more than that. I get it. And there are things that our teams could be doing to help with the implementation side of things, which we are all in on, helping schools, continuing to provide more and more implementation resources, but it needs to be as plug and play as possible. There are video resources, and then I'll show you how we intentionally bring character development uh, right alongside social emotional learning. All of our lessons are connected to the CASEL five uh, core competencies of social, social emotional learning, but we intentionally bring that character piece with it for multiple reasons that are really, really important. So that's kind of the breakdown. And now let's look at it live. So I wanna bring this up, It'll take me just a moment. And then I'm gonna look in this kind of transition point for maybe some early, questions that maybe have come in, but let me share this with you. All right, so here's a couple questions. How to get character dare buy-in? That's always a great question. How do we get character dare buy-in? Well, one, uh, an intentional implementation approach is key. Uh, to give just a couple of recent examples of schools that I've worked with, uh, one intentionally had us come in to do uh, grade level uh, assemblies as a way to kick off uh, the message of Character Strong, why it's important. And uh, and I think that was a, a good move. The principal got up. Um, I was there at this one and shared some different pieces around uh, the intentionality behind it. And many schools will do that on their own, but they'll do grade level type meetings to kick it off. The number one way to get buy-in with the character dare process though is this. It, it comes back to the law of the lid and it comes back to the adult readiness piece. Uh, the law of the lid says this, don't ever expect students to bring more to the room than what you're bringing as the teacher. Which means the number one way to get student buy-in is to have staff buy-in. It's the way that they deliver the character dare process. It's the way that they facilitate that process. Um, it's them sharing their own struggles with like facing the week's character dare as the educator. Um, it also is trusting the process that there is zero research to back up that something's going to take in a week, that something's even gonna take in a year, that you have to trust the process. You also have to understand that kids don't benefit from something that they don't receive. So are they actually receiving it before we know whether there's buy-in or not? So all those different pieces are there, but the key to student buy-in is staff buy-in, trusting that process. In fact, in our uh, our year two um, staff professional development, when we come into a school, we actually really start to dig into uh, deeper facilitation tips um, that educators could use to be more effective in the character dare process. Um, another question, how to make SEL work at the secondary level? Yeah, I think uh, one way that you can do that is by bringing character development right alongside SEL. And what I mean by that is this, you'll see the character dares. In fact, I'll show you that right now in a second. And uh, one of the reasons for the character dare process was to make it more engaging for a secondary student. 
There's a lot of social emotional learning offerings at the elementary level. There's some at the middle. There's almost none at the high school level. And there's a reason for that. Uh, but one of the things when I was at the district level that we found is we were using the same uh, company for our SEL curricula at the elementary and at the middle level. And at the elementary level, it was going excellent. People were loving it. Um, but at the middle level, um, I kept hearing this. Our kids are done with it. And I kept remember asking, them, what does that mean they're done with it? Well, they see it as elementary. And I'm like, well, what do you mean? Tell me more. Well, it looks the same. It feels the same. What looks the same? What feels the same? And they kept drilling down to the number one thing was um, things like role playing just didn't work. I'm like, that makes a lot of sense. Try doing role playing with a middle school, high school student. And so for us, the character dare process um, really is a, a process that brings social emotional learning type challenges with character development into a classroom setting. But it's not artificial. It's very authentic. It meets students right where they're at. It's not grading them on whether they do it or not and it gives them a voice. So I'm gonna show you this, and then I'll come back to some of the questions. Here is the digital platform. Welcome to Carrick Strong, there's a video here for you. And on the left-hand side, when I click advisory, I have full access, obviously, as a co-founder to all of the curricula. If you were in middle school, you would probably just be seeing grades six through eight. But the first thing that I notice is the overview tab. And I click on the overview tab, and there's a welcome to Character Strong, gives a little background, instructions on how to use. And then it talks about like year one tracks. And some schools, if they're maybe mixed grade level or maybe even by preference, they want they are going to choose where every student is going to do the same lessons. Um, and so all grade levels are engaged in the same uh, lessons each week. And they brand that and they communicate around that. It's the same character dares. And so that's what they're doing. Whereas other uh, schools will drop students right into their grade level. So it's differentiated um, and, and they're staying with that vertically aligned curricula. So there's different ways that you can do that. And then at the bottom here are some family letters, both in English and Spanish that you can send out. And then there's these implementation resources before I jump into an actual lesson. And the first one is our theory of change document. And it's our character strong implementation inventory. And this inventory is what we can control. It's those four components. Uh, when you click into that, it's gonna have uh, something that you could rate like a self-evaluation um, as a, a school. It's also something that you can have an outside fidelity audit. We go in and, and do these fidelity audits for schools where we go in and we interview a certain number of students and staff and your team, and we're looking for things. And then we provide um, feedback so that your teams, which are critical for implementation success, can really action plan around that. In fact, the schools that are all in will do a couple different fidelity audits, one in the fall, like you know, 10 weeks into the school year, and then one in the spring, and then they'll action plan around that. Uh, the second document that's here is the implementation leadership scale. And this is for your building leaders. We know that the building leaders are critical to the success of uh, Character Strong as a program. And yet many times it's the biggest roadblock. Uh, and yet administrators, just like teachers, have a lot on their plates. So we need to have something that really helps with what are the behaviors from the building leaders that need to be there to not just successfully implement Character Strong, but anything, any initiative, any program in your school. And this is a validated tool. It's called the Implementation Leadership Scale, and it's there. And then at the bottom, here's a couple tabs where you can just download all the lessons if you want to do that work for your teachers, the printable lessons uh, that they can use while um, doing the slide decks for each lesson. So I'm going to showcase uh, a lesson and then I'm going to take some more questions. So at the middle level, I'm going to click into advisory grade six, which is also the year one track for the middle level. And uh, I'm going to click into grade six, lesson six. And this is a mindfulness lesson, emotion mind. And as I click into that lesson, I'm going to uh, show you a couple things. One, there's a blue bar at the top. And the blue bar at the top uh, is telling this teacher uh, who has clicked into it or the staff that this is a new concept, which means this is the first time that mindfulness has been brought in. And so a teacher could go and click on that. And this one happens to be me. And it's just an explanation of what mindfulness is. Now, some of your staff are going to, I get it. They already know it, but some don't. This is tier one, which means all. So there's a little video instead of them needing to read a, a five page document on mindfulness. Here's a video giving an overview of what mindfulness is. There's objectives, 
materials. Remember, materials should be what you naturally have in the room. And then here's four buttons. And these buttons are this. You can download and print the lesson packet, the lesson plan in black and white, in color. Um, and then there's the slide decks. I'm gonna come back to the slide decks in just a moment, but they're in English and in Spanish because they're student facing. So both options are there. But the teacher could also preview the lesson. So here it is also digitally, and I'm gonna talk about the character dare process. And even when I uh, digitally go through this, if I wanna like click on an image, it fills the screen. So even without getting into the slide decks, it's interactive in that way. It shows the questions, instructions. Here's another image. If I wanted to click on it, I could. And it kind of takes you through the lesson. Now, most staff though, are going to engage in this lesson by clicking on the slide deck. And when I go into the slide deck, here it is. Mindfulness, emotion, mind. Here's the objectives. And then it starts the character dare process. So I'm gonna briefly talk about this then answer questions because this is critical for that student buy-in question that was asked. Um, one, the first two lessons for every grade level are community building lessons. So it's get to know type of lessons, relational activities, uh, because we need to be building that community, that positive culture and climate in our classrooms, which ultimately impacts our school climate and culture. Uh, but after those first two lessons, the character dare process begins. So one, staff learn, staff know that every lesson, the first five to seven minutes, the same process is going to happen. It's consistent. There's not going to be any surprises. The only difference is it's different character dares that we're talking about each week. And having done this process for a decade at the high school level, I know the power of this process. I always will tell you, trust this process. And so here's how it works. If I'm the educator coming in, I'll say, all right, class, here was last week's character dare. So last week they were sent off during the character dare process with this challenge. It's a kindness dare, if you notice in the lower left-hand corner, and it's titled, how can I help? Offer to help a family member with one task today or at some point this week, right? If you're implementing this more in a once a week setting. And then there's a little explanation that we could talk about. A different option is to do an activity. One of your family members usually does instead of them doing it. This could be taking out the trash or sweeping up. You could also reach out to your neighbors, coaches or teachers to offer your help. And so if here was last week's character dare, here's the power of the process, truth or dare. And it's interesting, we just did a fidelity audit in a, in a bigger district that is implementing this work and we learned two things. In fact, today, uh, Krista on her team put out a blog on her experience with those fidelity audits, not saying what the district was or whatever else, but just what, what did she learn? And here are two things that she learned. One, across the board, and this is middle school and high school, students are telling us, this is important. We should be having these conversations. We need to be doing this. But right behind it, You've got staff that are saying, well, I didn't know if my students would be into it. But once again, students can't benefit from something that they don't receive. Trust the process. So the fun nature of truth or dare is this, truth or dare. It's a play on that idea. But even if you're not comfortable with truth or dare, look at the actual prompts because this is the power. The power is this. It does not require you to have done the dare. It meets you right where you're at. It's either speak your truth what do you think about the character dare? Why do you like it or not like it? Think it's easy or not easy? What would happen if more people did do that? Um, or why are you afraid to do it? Could be any true statement. Does not require you to do it, but speak your truth. Or dare, I did it. Reflect on your experience with this last week's character dare. What did you learn about yourself? What did you learn about others? And I always remember one of my favorite reflections from a high school junior, 17 year old boy around doing something like this was he had done something like done a chore without being asked. And he came back and his reflection was dare. I did it, but I still got in trouble. And my job as the teacher was to just facilitate, to ask good questions. It's not to have all the answers. And I'm like, well, one, thanks for sharing. That's kind of like, why do you think you got in trouble? And his reflection was beautiful. He said, my mom said, it's how I do it. And don't tell me that we're not teaching character development and social emotional learning in that moment. And they're learning from each other because how you do things matters, right? And so even though 
Connor over here who maybe gave a true statement or didn't do the dare, but maybe he's learning from Steve who just shared that. And so we have this truth or dare process where they turn and share with each other. So everybody has a voice. And then we do a little bit full group. And then we send them off with another character dare for the week. And remember, this is sixth grade. This one's titled Kindness Ninja. Write five positive notes with an inspiring message. Leave each of them in a different place without others knowing. It says, think about a place or a person that needs some positive reminders. And leave a little note of encouragement without them seeing you. Finding these little notes can turn someone's day around. If you can't think of an inspiring message, search online for inspirational quotes and pick some you like. I have seen this character dare on social media across the country. And I love it when people are like, how did you know that I needed this? Or I found this in my classroom and teachers that are being impacted, not just students. And so you get them talking, you give them the opportunity. And what we always say is this, it was a great reflection from an educator at one of our regional trainings. He said, you know what, uh, when it finally clicked for me on the character dare process? I said, what, what was it? And he goes, well, in my mind, I kept thinking, well, what if not everybody is willing to do this? And he goes and he, and he was talking, I think, at that time with my co-founder, Houston Craft. And Houston said, well, when it came to that week's character dare, what if even 25% of the students did it? Would it be worth it? And the guy's like, when I like think about it and I add up and he's like, yeah, because if 25% are one in four are even engaging in this, it's going to have influence and impact on other students who didn't participate in, on the overall climate culture of their school. And I love this line, which is this, um, can we agree that the more opportunities that a student has to practice kindness, the more likely they are to demonstrate kindness. And yet what we all know is they need ideas. They need ideas, an invitation to participate. And so whether it's kindness or whether the character there is focused on selflessness or commitment, some of these are academically focused, many are relationally focused, some are at school, some are at home. Um, this is how the process works. The first five to seven minutes, here's last week's character dare. And then we have the process of truth or dare, let's discuss. And we move now away from role playing. This is just engaging conversation that meets them right where they're at. Here's the next week's character dare that we're sending you off with. And then we go into a lesson. And this lesson is on a social emotional learning topic, which happens to be emotion mind. And so the teacher would just click through, it's got some questions that they can ask, raise your hand if you've ever made a decision or took an action without really thinking about it first. Nobody's raising their hand to that. Um, and then it breaks down what mindfulness is. And then there's some discussion questions. Many of them are activities related to scenarios um, and things that they could do. So it's simple, deliberate activity in a slide deck, both in English and Spanish, and that's kind of a simple breakdown of that. The truth or dare process, the character dare process that then goes into a 20 to 23 minute lesson on either a social emotional learning topic or character development topic and to read some of the things and we can send the scope and sequence to you. Um, there's everything from community building activities to uh, mindfulness, a lesson on kindness, habit development, goal setting, uh, relationship skills, positive self-talk, uh, soften listening, um, introducing patience, celebrating differences, growth versus fixed mindset. Um, there's a mini school service project that is in there, empathy building, social awareness, introduction to gratitude, emotional awareness, and then some intentional class reflection things at the end. And that's just sixth grade. So I'm gonna pause and see if there might be some questions that have been getting dropped. Uh, by the way, also, we do some fun giveaways that I'm seeing from the team. We're going to give away some sticker packs to the first three people who had questions. So Kathleen Reeves, Rebecca Zahn, Michelle Wood, thanks for dropping in the questions first. Um, we are giving away um, some stickers there to you. So uh, I think we have your email. We'll make sure to uh, get your information so we can send some of those away. And then let me come down and see if there's some other questions here. Let's see. I've already answered the first two. Here's another one. We're already mid-February. Uh, this one says, does your billing go from February to February before you renew? Is there a prorated cost for just three months? What's left of this school year? So a school would purchase it uh, for in an annual like purchase. So the upfront cost 
covers you for the first year, but we could work with you on when you wanted that start date or the renewal date. Um, and so reach out to us. If there's some specific questions about that, we always work with schools. We came from the classroom. <clears throat> we know how that works. So please reach out to us with those specific questions for your specific scenario. But we have some ways that we can work with you on when the renewal is happening. But we usually do not sell it for just like, here's three months. You're gonna buy it for the year, but we could talk about when that renewal happens. So it'd be the same thing kind of in a reverse way of when then the year two renewal might start. Uh, how do we get staff buy-in? Well, one of the number one ways that you get staff buy-in is, uh, I'll say two things. One, you have to look at it through the lens of implementation science. And what implementation science tells us is this, um, you cannot um, think that this is just gonna take in one year. There's zero research to back that up. So uh, what implementation science tells us is, uh, first and foremost, you gotta get that staff readiness. And so that's dependent on your school. Um, and I just sent even this week, and, and if anybody reaches out to us, I can send to you three examples of some staff readiness type surveys that you could send. So you can actually find out where is your staff when it comes to not just rolling out character strong, but anything that you were trying to roll out. You need to have that staff readiness. And uh, I always say this, um, if you've got 80% or more, move. I talk with a lot of uh, administrators, a lot of teams, a lot of districts, and sometimes when people will say, um, well, we, we're having some problems with staff buy-in, I always wanna drill down on that. Well, what does that mean? And sometimes you'll hear, well, you know, there's these two or three teachers. Okay, that is not a problem to move. You can work and figure out with empathy, what do those teachers need? What are the roadblocks? But if you've got 80% or more, move. Your kids deserve it. You do not need to have 100% buy-in to move, but you do need that readiness. So sometimes it might be a year, a year of kind of digging in and doing the adult SEL work first, the adult relational work first, before you're ever ready to implement a tier one, what we're talking about today, social emotional learning curricula. And once you get ready to implement, you have year one of implementation, where you're constantly review, tweak, review, tweak, and that's where the teams matter. You need to have a tier one team, or a character strong team, or whatever it is, a group that has an administrator, a counselor, some key teacher leaders that are on there um, that are helping to action plan and move this work forward. Teaming matters, and we know that backed by research. And so they're the ones that are action planning learning. They're the ones coming before the staff. They might be demonstrating a part of the next like week's lesson at the staff meeting uh, or early on leading one of those lessons before the year starts. But they're keeping that work moving forward. And so during year one of implementation of that tier one curricula, uh, you're reviewing, tweaking, reviewing, tweaking. Then you have year two of implementation. Then you have year three of implementation. All along the way, reviewing and tweaking. Then in year four, you should look at it as standardized work. That is a different way of looking at rolling something out that totally goes against the age-old thought process in education, which is this too shall pass. And there's a reason why we think that. Um, but we need to go against that because there's zero research to back that up, that something's going to take in one year. So the, the how do you get staff buy-in? You gotta get them in quality professional development, which we can lead. We can help you with that. We uh, did over 200 professional development sessions in August last year alone, across the country, helping people with strengthening their tier one, foundational supports. And so reach out to us if you want some help in that, but you gotta get staff digging into this work together. Let's see, I'll do another one and then I'm gonna show you a high school lesson and then come back to more questions. Let's see. How have other schools who are implementing Character Strong into their PBIS programs? I love this question. Um, I heard once someone, when I was talking to them and they kind of uh, approached this type of question in this way, they said, well, we're a PBIS program. And it was almost as if like, we're PBIS, so we're not that. Like we're not Character Strong. And having come from that MTSS world, uh, the multi-tiered system of support for behavior, that was my work at the district level. My response to that person was this, that's great that you do PBIS. I hope that's not it. Because that's only one part of a strong tier one. So how does it work within? Well, one, you need to clearly show um, your staff how this work braids into your tier one supports. The key pieces of PBIS, 
can really strengthen a school's tier one. Where do we fit into that? We fit into that tier one level as well in these areas, school-wide implementation supports that are in there, that are part of that tier one focus, adult relational practices. So there are many tools that an educator needs to be successful, just like a surgeon, right? Who's doing their work and at times they need this tool or this tool to do what they need. We know that as educators, depending on the situation, we need lots of tools. But what we do is we really teach to five low burden, high impact tier one adult behaviors that should be happening school wide that would really ramp up, strengthen uh, the overall climate culture and relational supports in our building. And so we teach to that. That is a part of the tier one. Then we have the SEL curricula. So PBIS doesn't have that, the, the SEL curricula, tier one. And then we have that student leadership component that might fit a little bit more into a tier two type of setting, but it really is tier one because of the impact of what it's reaching out to. Um, and so that is a way that it would connect to the PBIS, but we need to show that to staff. How does it braid in? That's the work of the team. If not, they're gonna see it as one more thing. So we need to give them the why, we need to show them how it braids into the work, and we need to, in many cases, ease into that work. Especially if you got other things going on. I was with a district recently that was bringing in PLCs. And so to bring too much onto the system, to overload it, is not gonna work. So you could have an excellent program that is good for kids, but if you roll it out wrong, there's no coming back from that, even though it's good for kids. So the implementation piece really, really matters. I'm going to show you a high school lesson a little bit quicker and then I'm gonna dig into more questions here. At the high school level, grade nine, I'm gonna come up and I'm gonna to go to, let's see, uh, grade nine, lesson 11, which is a growth mindset challenge. Um, and so when it clicks over to that, same thing, this is the first time in grade nine that growth mindset's been introduced. So there's a video uh, that you could click into that explains growth mindset quickly to the teacher. There's objectives, there's materials, includes some videos. Remember the materials need to be something that um, is right there in the room that could be projected, right, or done. You don't have to go get materials. And uh, someone could preview this lesson digitally, uh, but also um, the slide deck is there, right, in English and in Spanish. And because this one does have an actual activity, like an experiential learning activity, there is a, a camera icon. So instead of it just being written out for the teacher to figure out, it also is here visually. And we're continuing to add more and more of these because this is really helpful. To make it easy to use, if a teacher's like, okay, what is this saying? Many will actually click into the activity setup so students can actually see the activity in action. And that can really uh, help support the activity happening and happening sooner in a classroom. So they could show that video. This one's pretty interactive uh, in regards to their learning about growth versus fixed mindset. They do a paper football activity, not the one that you flick it in the air, but that you're sliding it across the desk and trying to get it to hang off the corner. I've seen this one on social media as well across the country, but a pretty cool activity that's interactive that also includes the character dare process. Um, and so in that character dare process, remember that it starts, even though it's a growth mindset lesson, we start on the character development side. This one's a compliment creation, send a message of gratitude to someone you admire for their character. And this one's kind of a mad lib, fill in the blank. Many will even text this. If you don't have texting or, or um, phones allowed in your school, it can be written out and delivered. So there's always different ways that you could do this. They have the truth or dare conversation about that last week's dare. Sometimes you'll have reflections like this, man, I sent this to someone, I thought it was gonna be kind of fun, and they responded with this. How, how did you know that I needed that? And some really interesting conversations can come from uh, this type of a character dare challenge. The one that they're sent off with for this week is thank your teachers. At the end of each class today, tell each of your teachers one specific thing about their class that you enjoyed. Now notice, of course, we want our students uh, learning to be more thankful. It doesn't say just say thank you. It really drills it down. Tell each of your teachers one specific thing about their class that you enjoyed. I think that's really critical. That's so important. And you think about not just what we're teaching students there, but the impact that this potentially has on your staff. If you had students who are intentionally going up and, and thanking, um, and I've had this one, we used to do this one at the high school level. And every time there was a reflection that was 
Yeah, at the beginning of the week, I was really the only one that was doing it. But I noticed that during the week, more students started to do it and they weren't even in our class. Because at that time, uh, it wasn't even a school-wide curriculum. We were doing it in a specific kind of SEL character uh, leadership class that all of our ninth and 10th graders were engaged in. And it was really cool to hear them talk about the influence that happened from doing this intentional act. And so then in the slide deck, the video clips are there that can be shown. There's a partner activity that they get into, but it's growth versus fixed mindset. Paper football activity even shows how to set that up. Um, and then they uh, participate in the activity, they debrief that activity, and that's an example of one of our high school lessons. All right, I'm gonna jump over, see if there's some more questions here. There's lots of questions coming in, this is exciting. Okay, and maybe the team can help me by highlighting out the ones that I've already answered. I'm just trying to find where I was at, let's see. Are lessons continuously added? It says, when we get through a year, do we just start over from the beginning? And is that effective? Well, no, I mean, this is vertically aligned. So you should have, if at the middle level, you should have three years worth of lessons that you could have students where in the first year, maybe everybody does the same, and then they drop into their grade level. So it's differentiated at the high school level. I do know some because they have mixed advisory grade levels where they really just look at it as we've got a hundred lessons that are vertically aligned and we can use those in uh, whatever kind of scope and sequence over four years that we want to use so that it's not the same lessons each year. Um, but it's vertically aligned and there are lots of different ways that you can use that so that you're not just starting over. But the goal would be that you work through the lessons and then the next year, it would start with some intentional community building and then go into uh, lessons that are intentionally building upon themselves and yet can also stand alone. So it doesn't require that you've done sixth grade to be able to do the seventh grade lessons. They're vertically aligned. And so um, I think that that answers that. If there's anything that I don't ever specifically answer well enough, please drop another clarifying question or feel free to email. Um, let's see, I just wanna learn more about implementation and ease of access for schools. And I think this was a question early on. Um, I think there's two ways that we can really do that. We need to make time for this. So we need to make time for the adult SEL work to happen, the adult relational practices, but also time for them to dig into this, to see how easy it actually is to implement. But the number one thing we have to do is we got to ease the discomfort that staff have with teaching something that's outside of you know their normal content area. And it is possible and our kids need it and our kids deserve it. But we have to make time for that. Um, and so the schools that are most successful make time for that work and that professional development. Uh, let's see, are these created to be daily or weekly? I believe this is in reference to lessons uh, is what the team put. Yeah, they're built to be more of a once a week type setting, uh, but there's a lot of customizable pieces here. So um, we have uh, multiple schools where they actually meet four times a week and they're doing different things within their advisory. But one of the ways that they're using the character strong lessons is say on maybe they meet Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday in advisory and say it's 20 minutes every day. In the first advisory lesson, they'll introduce the character dare for the week, and then they'll go into like the first activity that is in the lesson, and that'll be day one. Day two, they'll come back to the character dare process. So they'll do the truth or dare. It's been 24 hours later, truth or dare. Let's check in with each other. And then maybe they'll finish the second activity that was in that lesson. And then Wednesday, they don't have advisory because maybe it's a late start day, but on Thursday, they come back and they'll do the truth or dare process, five minutes, right? Partner turn and talk, so they're getting that reminder that is needed and not losing that week's character dare. And then maybe in that advisory, they actually are doing something different. Maybe it's something that the school created, maybe it's at the high school level, career college uh, readiness type of like a survey on uh, jobs or career fields they might be interested in, or maybe it's an academic review day. Um, but they still started the day with that kind of quick starter, truth or dare, how's the character dare going? And then on Friday, sometimes they'll do different things. Maybe it's an assembly that they're doing, or maybe it's checking in on the truth or dare process, uh, but it's an option. If you didn't get through the rest of the lesson, then you can today as a teacher, or it could be academic review, but there are ways that you could do this more in a daily type of fashion, but it's built to be more once a week, 30 minute lessons, um, but flexible depending on your needs. Uh, let's see, how many sessions of advisory per week 
do you advise? You know, I think this is built, um, this is really school choice. I think it matters what you're doing in there. You know, a, a true three-legged stool of a true advisory program would be this. One leg would be career college readiness. What are we doing around that? The second leg would be around academic review. What are we doing to build that into the school day? But the third is more of that life readiness or the social emotional learning side. And so I do know schools that have a successful model where they have more than one kind of advisory or homeroom or whatever you're calling it type of period that's happening during the week. Um, a lot of times, though, for Character Strong, it is more of like we would fit into more of that once a week type of setting. Um, but you might do other things with those other time slots that you're doing, because for many of you, you do already have other things that you've do, you're doing that you've created. It is a way that you could also bring in some of those great things that you've already created, but having something that's vertically aligned, intentionally designed from start to finish can be a huge value add and strengthening of those things that you've created. Um, let's see. Uh, let's see. Uh, how have other schools who are implementing Character Strong into their PBIS programs, I think I already answered that one, are lessons continuously added when we get through the year? Okay, I think I already answered that one. To implement this district-wide, is there a max number of schools that can use this at one time? Is the fee assessed per school? So there's no max. I mean, we've worked with some pretty big districts that have 69 plus schools in their district, um, but it is a per site license. So everybody in your building would get access to that with a specific login uh, for your school. Um, but we do have lots of district uh, level pricing options where if multiple schools are buying, uh, there are discounts that go along with that. So please do reach out. But uh, you could have all schools engaged with this at the same time, but it would be a per site license. Uh, so reach out with specific questions that you might have. Uh, let's see. Uh, hi, I have a terrible connection due to weather issues. Is there another way to see this webinar later? Yes, I know why the team left that question in there. We will send this replay um, that you can come back to and you can watch it. Um, and so please do check in on that if there's something that uh, you didn't get to see or you had to jump off early. Uh, here's another one, let's see. Can you send out a copy of a staff readiness for SEL character curriculum survey? Yeah, I'll include one in the, the follow-up, but also feel free to directly reach out to me. So my email is john, J-O-H-N, at characterstrong.com, and I would love to send you, even today, the, the three examples, the three surveys that you could use uh, that you could tweak to meet your needs, but uh, are tools where you could really um, kind of find out where the readiness level is of your staff. Uh, let's see. Hey, John, I agree with you 100% on the PBIS and character stance. However, there is a belief among, in quote, character ed people that PBIS is not character building. They believe PBIS is all about a carrot placed in front of a kid to get them to behave versus being internal. I've always disagreed and was pleased to see a strong PBIS presence in the CS materials. Prompt is all about PBIS. Yeah, there's there are so many good things about PBIS. Here's one way. I think there is a place where external rewards do play a role. I think where many of us realize is that it can't be the thing by itself. And so recently on our podcast, it was actually on Monday, Houston and I, as co-founders, were celebrating the 100th episode of our podcast. Um, and if you haven't got on and listened to that, you should. Um, it comes out two times a week. It's shorter in nature. Um, we call it kind of the character strong commute, cut the fluff, get right to the stuff. And we have people from all over the country that are uh, uh, chiming in, that are in the work, that are sharing things that are working. And we really um, talked about this. We talked about that character strong really gets to the intrinsic motivation piece. So I think that there is a really cool place where something like PBIS, and there are different ways to do that, but if you're a PBIS school, right alongside Character Strong can be a powerful combination um, to meet the needs of students and staff. And so I appreciate you bringing that in. Uh, how long are the lessons designed to last? How many lessons are there for each grade level? So coming back to that, uh, it's all vertically aligned. So sixth through eighth grade, there are 35 lessons per grade level that are vertically aligned. At the high school level, there are 25 lessons per grade level, nine through 12, um, that are all vertically aligned and they're written to be 30 minutes in length, but can be customizable to be a little bit shorter, a little bit longer uh, if needed. All right, so that's a lot of questions uh, that have been coming in. Uh, I'm gonna ask the team to 
put any others that you might have in there. I'm looking here. I want to do another giveaway. Um, we're going to send three what we call swag bags. Might be like a Make Kind of Normal or Character Strong shirt with some stickers uh, to people who have been engaging with today's webinar. And I appreciate you doing this. So Ali uh, Futhi, I apologize if I mispronounce your name, Tammy Fast, uh, Callie, Sharon, uh, the three of you are going to be sending a swag bag to We have your email, um, but the team might be reaching out to get information from you that are needed. But really appreciate you taking the time uh, to be with us today. We're not done yet, so ask any other questions you might have. I'm going to show one other really cool thing that a school or district that is using Character Strong at the secondary level gets access to. And so not just the lessons that are vertically aligned and built to be plug and play, but they also get something uh, called the Character Strong Gym. And the Character Strong Gym really is a library of resources. And uh, we're always adding. Uh, in fact, just uh, to make sure that I hit this point, we're always updating and adding uh, to our entire platform. So ha once again, coming from the classroom, coming from the work, if Character Strong's advisory curriculum looks the same year to year, it's going to be done within two or three years. It's going to be sitting on the digital shelf. And so we're always updating. We're, we're getting feedback on lessons. And the ones that are getting rated the lowest in terms of how engaging or the quality, we are changing those lessons in regards to strengthening them. If it's really bad, moving them out, moving something else in. We know which lessons are getting the highest rating and making sure that we're keeping those fresh. Uh, we're adding different relevant video clips at times. We are always doing different things to freshen, to make new this curricula, adding other resources, because we know that is needed for success. And when a school uh, begins with Character Strong, each year there's an annual renewal fee. I think it's like $499. We try to keep that as low as possible. Um, and they get uh, continued access to that online platform, but also any and all updates that we make. And uh, this last year alone, we did an entire equity audit on our curricula, and there wasn't a lesson that wasn't touched in terms of looking at the language that is used, the examples, so that it's accessible and relevant to all students. We also added the English and Spanish slide decks. So in the past, there were schools that were just using the digital lesson and clicking on an image or clicking on the video, but now there are slide decks. They automatically get all those updates that are made, and I think that's really important to note. They also get any and all updates that we make to the Character Strong Gym. And so the Character Strong Gym, when I look at it right now, there's an entire section on growth mindset and academics. So it's totally by choice, but here's a fostering a growth mindset in the classroom and academic approach. So how do we bring growth mindset into all of our grading practices? Well, here's a whole toolkit on ways that you could do that. Um, there is an entire set of restorative practices that a school could use if you wanted to bring in community building circles. And some of you might already be deep in this work, which is great, but here is a simple, what is it, the purpose of it, why do it, tips for implementation, right? What ages is it for, uh, equity principles. So there's this resource and here's proof, right? That backs it up. But if you wanna bring in community building circles, we've got that in our Character Strong Gym for you. And then there's these really cool resources here that are, are, are adult character dares. So there's an entire year's work, worth of admin character dares. You know, attitude reflects leadership. The law of the lid. It's not just don't ever expect students to bring more to the room than what you're bringing as the teacher. It also goes to the leaders of the building. Don't ever expect teachers to bring more to the day than what we're bringing as the building leaders. And so here is weekly kind of character dares specific for an administrator. And I love this one. There was a podcast that was on this. Alicia Jensen in the Ording School District uh, shared this. I love this idea. So practical. But one of the pain points is uh, as admin getting out of the office because there's so much on your plate. So here's a really practical strategy called staff chips. Purchase an inexpensive set of chips and put each staff member's name on one. Each day, grab three to five chips and put them in your pocket. As you walk around the school, intentionally spend a couple extra moments connecting with those staff members. Pop into their classroom, stick around to ask them an extra question and get to know them, or ask them what they need right now to feel supported. When done, put those chips in another bin until you've worked your way through all the chips. So practical, what a great idea. And even if you still have two or three chips in your pocket that you didn't get to, you put them back in that bin of not done, 
and you're gradually working your way through your staff. So there's a bunch of those that are in there. As ideas, there's also an entire year's worth of family character dares, things that you could send home even once a week to show a connection to what you're doing at school. Many of these are very relevant, practical ideas that a family could do. I love the family bucket list, right? Which is sit together as a family, see if you can brainstorm a list of 25 things that you wanna do together this year. Remember those things do not require money. Um, things that you could do together, just ideas that they can consider. And then there's two years worth of staff character dares. And these are powerful. The counselors or the administrators can be sending out to the staff once a week, these staff character dares. We know many um, schools and staff, they meet on Monday mornings and they kind of share the week's character dare in different ways that they're going to do it. In fact, I love this one, ET phone home, a principal actually dressed up as ET <laughs> when on a Monday morning sharing this character dare for the week. But I love it. Take your class roster and highlight three to five names of students you feel could use some unconditional love and support early on in the year or semester, pick up the phone and call home, either leaving a positive message or telling the parent or guardian how excited you are to have their student in your class and a reason why. Same thing as the student dare. What if 25% of your staff actually took this dare? I wonder what would happen to the overall climate culture of your school, the lives of your students who will never forget that phone call, the parents who won't forget it, because many times the parents, the only communication they have with school is either none or it's not good. So I love these practical ideas that we could be sending out, and that is in the Character Strong Gym. And there's one final thing I want to show you because there's a lot in here. Uh, but here's an activity library, and then I'll end with questions and giveaways. But say that I'm an English teacher at the high school level, and it's not the advisory lesson of the week, but it's the beginning of the year, and I understand that relationships do matter, that building an intentional climate culture in my classroom has an impact on the overall performance of my students. And I'm like, but I don't have the tools. I don't have the tools. Like I hear about these like get to know you activities or a, even a name type of activity where we're, we're learning each other's names, but I just don't have the tools. They didn't teach me that in my college prep classes. And so you go into here and here's the activity library. And first tags are by grade level. So I click here and I'm like, well, my students are gonna be ninth and 10th grade. And so I click that. And the time that I have for this activity, you know, I got a lot of things I gotta get to, um, one to 10 minutes. And you'll notice that the activities start to move. And the group size is, well, I want it to, it's a full class. So I'm gonna click large group, 10 plus and the activities are moving on the right-hand side. And the risk level here is low because we're starting the year off. I want it to be low risk, um, let me click that again. And then the tags are this, um, debrief, energizer, get to know, icebreaker, name games. So you know what, I want it to be a get to know activity. And I click that and all of a sudden, two, four, six, seven activities come up that I could choose from, that I could do in my English classroom that isn't the advisory lessons, but here are some get to know things. And when I click on this, maybe it's reception line, I click on view activity and it's a very simple materials, none. Here are the instructions. Here's an optional activity you can do and here's some debrief questions. Incredibly powerful, easy to implement, right there for your staff to use to infuse into the daily fabric of your schools. All right, any final questions? I'm gonna come back to the slide presentation uh, that I had and answer any final questions that you might um, uh, still be lingering. Uh, and also wanna click to this next one. We do have 2020 educator trainings. There might be one near you that you could bring your administrator, your uh, teacher leaders, your counselor to, and you can go there, characterstrong.com. I'm sure the team can also drop that link into the chat for everyone uh, to see, but we'd love to have you. It's a great thing either to learn about Character Strong or to really start digging into that theory of change. And uh, those trainings are trainings. It's not a sales pitch. It is a training to dig deep into this work. And even if you're doing something else, that theory of change, school-wide integration practices can be with anything that you're doing. The adult relational practices work within to anything that you're doing. The tier one curricula could be, how are we getting fidelity with teaching this in a tier one type of fashion, whatever it is that we're teaching. And then on that student leadership side of things, there are a lot of different ways to do that, but what are we doing with a smaller group of students? that we're pouring into even more 
more time, more energy that are representative of your student population and are more likely to demonstrate those pro-social behaviors that we wanna see school-wide. So I'm about to give some training registrations away, seeing if there's any other questions. Let's see here. I don't think I'm missing, let's see. What do the restorative practices look like at the high school level? Uh, well, you'll see, I mean, the, the high school practice or the restorative practices that are there, every one of them could be used and infused into a high school classroom. They're very practical. They could be class to class or it could be a school-wide approach. Um, if you're wanting to look at those more, I'd love to send you a couple. So reach out to us, email us, uh, info at characterstrong.com, and we'll send you a sample of those so that you can see it. Uh, but they're built to be something in that library that anybody could implement. There's some construction starting next door, so it's good that we're close to the end. Um, let's see. We have mixed grade level advisories, and the older kids are feeling like the track one lessons are not advanced enough. Any suggestions? Yeah, learn from that. Uh, one, expect it. And that's a great tip for anybody implementing. Your oldest students, especially in year one, you need to do some different things for them. And so one of the things you could do is move them to the older lessons because they're going to be leaving, the older kids. Uh, you could be doing some other things with them that you maybe create as well. So make it known that they are doing different things than the younger students, be intentional in that. Um, but I would work in some different lessons then, uh, the ones that you're doing with the younger students to show them that it's differentiated. Another way that you can do it is get some of your older students going into the younger classrooms and co-teaching those lessons with, with teachers. Have them help, get a bigger group that is um, really uh, supporting the work because people support what they help to create and students being a part of that process of making that happen can be a cool way to get buy-in with a certain group of your older students. But I would recommend bringing uh, some of the older lessons in and or other things that you do um, that get them engaged with something that is different and that they know it's different. Uh, and I can share some more of those. If you have specific questions, uh, don't hesitate to reach out. Uh, let's see, I just wanna say that I attended the training in October in Portland, it was awesome. You changed my mind about the program. And I love that and I would encourage anybody to come. And if we can do something to help you get to one of our regional trainings, please do uh, let us know and reach out. Um, as I give away some, free training registrations. We just hit 100 uh, episodes on our Character Strong podcast. I think we're coming up on 100,000 unique downloads and listens. If you're not on there yet, you can literally just text CS Podcast to that number, 33777, and it's really easy to subscribe to that. Uh, we'd love to have you listening in from time to time. Um, and uh, that is a way that you can do that. Here are some registration giveaways. I hope that this was valuable for you and that your questions were answered. Uh, if you have a team that's meeting and you want a digital walkthrough, don't hesitate to reach out. In fact, uh, I can probably do this as well. If you're on the actual webinar right now, let me go over to the chat. I'm just gonna drop into everybody right now. Here is an actual calendar link that you can use to set up a call right now on a schedule, uh, a time that works for you. It's an easy way to do that, to ask questions about the advisory curriculum. Uh, we'd love to talk with you. I can do a live demo for your team like I did here, because sometimes you might hear it and you're like, this is great, but how do I translate that over to my principal or our team uh, that's meeting? Let us know when you're meeting. We'd love to do a kind of one-on-one -on -one or for your team uh, demonstration of that, answer any questions that you might have. I love it, Amy, your podcast is my favorite. I <laughs> listen to multiple a day until I get caught up on both seasons, then I'm sure it will make me crazy to have to wait. Two times a week, Amy, though, we're coming out with it, so we try to keep that frequent so you're not having to wait very long. All right, here's our giveaways. Uh, three training registrations. Um, uh, so if you find a location and you can get there, we will cover the cost in the sense of the registration cost. Uh, so if you can get yourself there, uh, we'd love to offer one today to Steve McConnell. And we have your email, but we're gonna be uh, reaching out. Uh, Jen Reisinger, and, uh, and I really apologize, is it Sunye Forrest? Sunye Forrest, uh, we would love to offer you each a training registration, one of our regional trainings. Remember, we also do in-building, in-district professional development. 
And uh, we can also, once you really start implementing, help with that through implementation type trainings and fidelity audits. I'm looking at a blank screen here. I'm not seeing, let's see, is someone asked about kind of the training cost, the PD cost? Feel free to reach out. We have pretty straightforward on a cost for um, whether it's a half day or a full day that's inclusive of travel. So reach out and we can respond to you in terms of what those costs might be. Uh, but hope everybody, it's 929 right before that hour mark. Appreciate you and the work that you're doing to support the whole child. If we can support you in that work, we would love to do so. Make it a great day.